Okay, everybody, we are now fully being recorded and live on Facebook as well. I'm seeing we have all of our members on BZBA. Um, do we have everyone that was scheduled to talk and attend tonight? Uh, Emily, I don't know how many speakers we have. Let's see three. All right. So, no. we have what we need. Tony, if you want to unmute yourself, um, as long as Emily's ready, I think we're ready to go. Emily, you good? Yep. Go ahead. Well, welcome, everybody, to the uh, January 21st, 2021 meeting of the Board of Zoning and Building Appeals. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Can we please have the roll call? Uh, Ms. Barnard? Here. Ms. Bowles? Here. Thank you, Mr. First? Here. Pastor Linder? Here. Uh, Mr. Repke? Here. Are there any Additions or corrections to the minutes of December 17th, 2020, as presented. Hearing none, we'll mark those as approved. Item number three, approval of the agenda. I do know we have a change to that. So, uh, Mr. First, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to move to add an agenda item, the election of officers for this coming year. We have a motion for adding the election of officers. Where would we like to place that? Mr. Shook, do you have an opinion on where that should fall? I looked and it's varied from year to year. So we've had it under new business, but that's fairly late in the process with unfinished business. Chris, you're on mute. Sorry. Um, I would put it between public comment and unfinished business. So call it like B1, item B1? Uh, I would just, uh, I would re renumber it so that unfinished business is D, new business is E, other business F, and adjournment is G. So. Uh, election of officers would be C. Okay. <clears throat> you want to rephrase your motion, Mr. First, to include that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, my rephrase motion is that uh, I move that we, we add a, a new item. This would be item C1 to the agenda for the election of officers for the year 2021. And subsequently, uh, uh, read letter the uh, the following: uh, unfinished business, new business, other business, and adjournment. I'll second that motion. Moved and seconded. Can we please have the vote? Uh, Miss Barnard. Yes. Miss Bowles. Yes. Mister First. Yes. Pastor Linder. Yes. And Mr. Retke. Yes. Um, we are at A4, so swearing in of speakers. If you wish to speak before the board tonight, would you please stand and raise your right hand? I guess I can do that. I guess we need to. Do you swear or affirm that the information provided here tonight before the Reynoldsburg Board of Zoning and Building Appeals is true? If so, say I do. I do. I do. Thank you. And before we, you would speak on your selected topics, if you could just state your name and address for the record, we'd appreciate it. Item B, any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move. Was there, hearing none, we'll move on to item C, um, election of officers. Do we have any motions? 
or nominations, my bad. Mr. Pastor Linder, I would uh, nominate Mr. Retke to continue to serve as our chairman. And I second. Any other nominations? Do we want to handle these individually or do we want to just collectively? Let's handle them individually. We'll take a, okay. uh, a roll call on this and then we'll move on to vice chair. Any other nominations? Hearing none, can we have the vote? Uh, Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Pastor Linder? Yes. And Mr. Retke? Yes. <laughs> I was going to abstain, but. Uh, <laughs> Any other nominations for vice chair? This is Pastor Linder. I would like to nominate Mr. First to continue to serve as vice chair, if he's willing. I am. Thank you, Pastor. I'll, this is uh, Amy Barnhart. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any other uh, nominations? Hearing none, can we have a vote, please? Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Pastor Linder? Yes. Mr. Retke? Definitely yes. <laughs> okay, so normally I think we produce a uh, motion uh, nominating staff to be the secretary of the board through their transcription services and like Yes, we would typically do that, but with the zoning change that's now written in ordinance, so we no okay. longer need to do that. It shows my age then. Moving on, I think we're at what? Item D1, unfinished business for application 2020-5499. Can we please have an update on that? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you'll recall at our last meeting, this was a uh, request before the board for a conditional use to operate a child daycare center uh, at 1792 Bryce Road. Uh, the daycare center, uh, as you recall, the uh, proposal was to service 40 to 45 children. Uh, and the board had wanted some additional information regarding the outdoor play area. And I will share my screen with what was submitted subsequently. And I know the applicants on this evening too, if um, Mr. Carter, if yes. you wanted to provide an update while I. Hi, um, hello, my name is Brian Carter um, and I'm following up on the conditional use application from December. Um, I spoke with the owner um, of the location. Uh, we've looked at some different areas um, that we could possibly um, use uh, put the child care center and um, the area that we were looking at because as you can see here in the front this is all parking lots um, but here this grass area this is about an acre of land here um, and i spoke with uh, ohio job and family services for the amount of children that we're servicing we would only need about 800 to a thousand square feet um, so this land here is a little under um, an acre of land, this grass area, which is directly across um, to the left of the building. Um, I spoke with Job and Family Services. I asked somebody to come out and walk um, and look at the property. Um, they said that they would, that that's fine. They have other daycares. Um, there's actually a daycare across the street um, that is located in the plaza directly across the street. Um, and their playground is actually um, right here on the end here. Um, and they're here in the middle and they walk their children down um, to the end and their playground is at the end of the building on the, other, on the opposite side here. Um, not on Astor Avenue, but this area, their playground is located right here um, at the um, end of that building. Um, with a lot less land. Um, so we were proposing um, the only other proposal place that we would be able to put a playground area would be in this grass area. And we would have 
the children and walk with, of course, with a child care provider um, over and you, they would just be using the sidewalk in front of the building to the grass area here. And it would be protected with um, concrete barriers, two levels of concrete barriers um, to protect. And then I also provided a drawing of the indoor space of the um, daycare. Um, it's a drawing that I did. It's not professional, but it um, kind of shows where we would have um, the preschoolers, the toddlers, and the infants. We would not be servicing any school agers in that particular location. Very helpful, Mr. Carter. Is there any other comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Carter, just, just for the record so that I understand correctly, the grassy area you're referencing to is the area adjacent to the convenience store at 1750 Bryce. Is, is that correct? Not the area behind the ANA Speedway new and used time. It's the, it would be the area by the Speedway because this area, there's a fencing here and there's we would put two levels of concrete barriers. This is almost, this is about an acre of land here. So per job, Ohio Job and Family Services, we only need 800 to 1,000 square feet uh, for the amount of kids that we're going to service. Um, uh, and we would protect it with, we would have more than enough space um, to protect the child, the playground area with two levels of concrete barriers. So if, um, God forbid, anything were to happen, the concrete barriers that we're proposing, um, the first level, um, could withstand about 3,000 pounds, and then the next level can withstand about 1,000 pounds, if, and then that's at a speed of 70 miles per hour. Well, I would certainly hope that we don't encounter that in a, a parking lot. No, I'm just, but you want to be safe. And then again, across the street, um, we're kind of modeling it kind of off of daycares in the area, because there's a daycare directly across the street that is, their playground is further um from their location it's and it's at the end here uh, <clears throat> their playground here is not behind it but it's at the it's at the opposite the opposite end um now i i believe that that property there is is a, a separate property uh do you have permission from the property owner to utilize it in that manner yes i do have permission so this is where their playground is and there's no i don't see any protection there and they're like on the street but i mean it's not uh, busy yeah we we've revisited they had a playground in the back that we weren't aware of and uh, andrew can you look into that because i don't remember that ever coming up i i just don't see us approving that i'm not trying to tell anybody i just we just modeled ours off of where they're at i don't see a play we went over there and talked to those owners and they don't have a playground in the back. Yeah, I remember denying that because uh, they went for a vote, you know, of course, with the, the zoning board. And I, I don't oh. know that that's been approved by the, the board. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into that. That looks. So as you can see, our location is right there. They're not there. They will be using the sidewalk and walking right here and then we're not going to be utilizing all of this land for playground area but it would be protect all the entire land would be protected with fencing and concrete barriers sure sure M mr shook um i i do think that this is a, a vast improvement over the the previous area directly behind the the unit they're going to occupy but are you otherwise satisfied that uh this meets the requirement in our code that uh, the player and not be adjacent to a loading and unloading area. Unmute. Um, I, I, I do think that there's still some uh, concern here as it relates to uh, the conditions that need to be met for a conditional use permit for a child care center. Um, so going back again on page 167, of the zoning code that deals with uh, the regulations for child care centers. It says no play area shall be located adjacent to a loading space, loading dock, other area where we're likely to idle. Now, the purpose of that particular provision uh, isn't necessarily to prevent 
vehicles from being able to access the children. So the barriers, uh, while they address some safety concerns, they don't address the concern about uh, fumes in adjacent lot. So if we look at the big lots there that's just uh, east of the grassy area where the playground will be located, um, you have a loading dock there where they have those 18 wheelers um, who will pull up and unload them for big lots purposes. If you pull up the aerial photo, actually, it shows a little bit more clearly what the loading dock looks like. Yeah, so you can see, um, for example, in the aerial photo, uh, you'll have one truck that is that is parked right behind that grassy area there in the big lot. lot. And then you have the loading area uh, that is just to the southeast of that other 18 wheeler. And so the concern here, of course, is that if they're idling and there are fumes, if children are playing in that grass area, they're and that's the purpose of that requirement that we have in our code is uh, prevent uh, children from being affected by those fumes. Okay. Um, well, I, again, we wouldn't be using that area. That would be the only area that we could, because there's no way for us to put a playground in the parking lot. Um, so with, I guess if there's no other way that we can go with that area, we'd have to withdraw the application. And, and and to be fair with that, I, I, I'd hate to see that because I do think this is a, a significant improvement in use for that. Yeah, I mean, at, this, at this point, before. if we would be able to use it as a daycare, we would come back and maybe try to do it as a bar, but we would not be coming back as a daycare because we're already, we would be 60 to nine at this point because we have another location that we can use in Columbus. Because there's just there's no other area in the parking lot. It, it honestly wouldn't make sense to have a playground in the parking lot. There's a dumpster area there, but that would be more of a walk um, to have, uh, you know, a, a playground there. And we again, we would be utilized. That's a, that's we measured it. The person, the realtor, the owner of that land, it's over. It's a little under an acre of land. So we don't even, per Ohio Jobs and Family Services, we only need max 800 square feet. So a lot of that area wouldn't even be used. Mr. Carter, just for argument's sake, if you were to put the playground, the 800 to the 1,000 square feet, as you just mentioned, further to the west of that, Emily, would you put up a measurement and just show me visually how far away generally the western <laughs> edge, not necessarily the western edge, but the western area of that green space is from the loading dock? We would be looking to, we would be looking to be a little bit primarily in the, we would use the middle of that land because we have the whole land. You can't rent the whole thing. So we would use the middle um, because I don't want to be too close to this, the tire place either because it's a business, even though we would have use of the land, but it would be more in the middle. Um, and we would you know, I don't want them on the edges and all of that, again, would be fenced in and protected with the barriers. So I'm more, I guess if you can move the pointer to um, the middle there, um, I guess come down a little bit. It's right, is, down, right in the middle of the green space and then move the other one over to the loading dock. That truck that is there, that could be potentially illegally parked. Correct. Just put it right on the loading dock itself, right there, where right where the semi trailers are. Yep, put it right up there. Yep, About 530 feet, give or take, maybe a little more if you centered up the green space. So that's where we were, project, you know, project proposing to put the playground because there's so much land there. Right. Uh, makes sense. I think we actually talked about this in the last meeting about the potential of utilizing that space. Yeah, and, and if I could just just elaborating a little bit further, um, and this is probably in the favor in subsection G1. Um, which is a, a different but similar requirement when it comes to conditional use permits for 
child care centers, it states that uh, no conditional use permit for a child care center shall be issued for a lot that is within 100 feet of any lot or parcel with an approved gasoline station use or which is likely to generate noxious fumes. So if we're talking about a distance of more than 500 feet uh, between the area where the playground would be and where the loading dock is, um, I certainly think that is a, that's a significant distance compared to what the other subsection requires. Um, so I do think that that would potentially put it within the purview of the board here to determine whether uh, to go ahead and grant this, not necessarily on a legal basis, but uh, just to use your judgment. So once once we put the ballards in and you're gonna mulch it and put some play equipment in there? Yes, I mean, the, the that would be the last thing, but the first thing we would do would be to start to, we wanna put the protective barriers up first. Yeah. Um, because we don't require that much space, we're going to do, we're going to have two levels of protection, you know, so that's, that's the main thing. But of course, we would go in and do the work and um, the work inside the center. Um, but yeah, the playground would be probably the middle of the development of the, the child care center. And that's all, that's all monitored by the jobs and family services in? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, as far as the amount of space that we need, yes. <clears throat> and as far as, you know, they have their regulations as far as how far a child care center can be and also where it can be located as well. So that's why I went and actually had somebody come and look at the space and see if they would be okay with that as well. Are there any other questions or concerns? Discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do have a question. Uh, Mr. Carter, I know that last month we had spoken, um, you know, wondering if there were any other properties that might be more suitable for a child care center and just wondering if you had looked at anything else. The other child care centers that I looked at were on the west side of Columbus. Oh, okay. Any other discussion, questions, concerns? No, I, I think this is a, a significant improvement as far as the player is concerned. I, I, I do agree uh, with Mr. Shook that this is a a vastly improved use uh, for this this space uh, than it, its its prior occupant. Yeah, it, it's a better proposal, I think, overall than what we saw with the playground in the back. So, you want to have your... Mr. Carter, out of curiosity, once you if this were to be approved tonight, um, how fast do you think that you'd be certified and you'd have children? Uh, inside the center, and I'm sure you've got some some renovations to do on the inside. But do you have a general timeline of what you're looking at? Uh, probably we could we would be able to get this the space since it was already um, a bar. It already has bathrooms and stuff like that. So we I would believe that we would be up and running in 120 days. Okay. Because we already have an architect ready to go in and. Um, do the design and the architect always, the architect applies for the licensing with Ohio Jobs and Family Services. And then, you know, you go by that floor plan and once everything is in there, Ohio Jobs and Family Services comes out and approves. This is a final walkthrough. I mean, generally I've done this uh, in Columbus before. So I've done it in 90 days, but I always say 120 days. Mr. Shook, would you have any other questions or concerns? Any other discussion? I'm reading. I know that. Well, 
Would anybody like to make a motion? Hey, Tim, Audrey, I'm going to mute you guys real quick, okay? And then when it gets to you guys, I'm going to unmute you, okay? Okay. Hi, this is Olivia. I move to approve, um, approve as is, but ensuring that the child care center is um, within that 150 feet away from, um, away from the parking lot of the big lot. This Mr. First, I second. Clarify it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to clarify on the motion. Um, uh, are we saying within or, or outside? I apologize, outside. Okay. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Good catch. Moved and seconded. Any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, can we have a vote, please? Uh, Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Pastor Linder? Yes. Mr. Retke. Yes. Well, thank you, Mr. Carter, for working with us, and we wish you all the best, and hopefully be open in 90 days rather than 120. Yes, I hope so. So I know uh, Mr. Bowser will have some interactions with you, I'm sure. So is there anything you want to conclude with that, Mr. Bowser? I think I'm good. Um, I think obviously um, we'll just wait to uh, have you submit uh, permits uh, via us through the building department. I know you'll need a change of occupancy. Looking forward to getting that uh, site cleaned up. As Mr. Shook had mentioned previously, this is going to be a significant better use than what was currently or previously there. So uh, uh, we're just welcome to Reynoldsburg and uh, hope success to you. Uh, thank you so much. My apologies, I messed up my screen and I can't get it back. <laughs> um, moving on, item C2, I believe. D2. Oh, D2, my bad. Uh, we have the appeal for 6669 Rocky Den Road. Is there an update on that? Uh, yes, Chairman. Um, the, the appellant on this agenda item has now registered that property as a vacant property with our service department. So that appeal was withdrawn. Well, I'm glad they were able to work it out. So um, I guess moving on to item D1 or uh, E1 under new business, we have the appeal for 6550 Ragosa Avenue for Mr. William Dorsey. Can we please have a presentation? So I'm gonna give just a brief background here because this is gonna be the first um, appeal that the board has heard under uh, the new chapter 1399 of the codified ordinances of Reynoldsburg. Um, as the board is, is I'm sure now aware, uh, the city has implemented an ordinance that would require vacant properties to uh, register with the city um, so that we can identify where these vacant properties are located and perhaps more importantly ensure that uh, as they are registered there is a security plan in place uh, for each particular building to ensure um, that it is protected from trespassers uh, and to ensure that it's being properly maintained. Uh, there are three appeals uh, up this evening uh, under this ordinance. Each of those appeals timely filed um, and the city will go ahead and stipulate that each of these properties is well maintained. Uh, there are no current code violations on any of these properties, um, uh, th but that uh, I believe each of the property owners have now submitted their appeal uh, and would like to make their presentation as to why uh, their properties are not vacant. And so I, with that, I, I would just ask Mr. Dorsey to go ahead and make a brief statement uh, as to uh, this particular property and why it is that um, he believes we should find that it is not vacant. Well, 
Welcome, Mr. Dorsey. If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Mr. Dorsey, please unmute yourself. Still muted. So usually in the lower left, there's a uh, little microphone button or sometimes if you hit your space button, that'll take the mute off. Did there I you mute go. it now? There you yep, go. You're good. Okay. Yeah, my name is William Dorsey. I live at 6550 Ragosa Avenue in Reynoldsburg. Been there over 10 years. I'm a retired policeman from the city of Columbus Division of Police. But that is my residence. I live there. Uh, Mr. Dorsey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Uh, I'm City Attorney Chris Shook. Yes, sir. Um, you know, the, the primary reason why the city identified this particular property as potentially vacant is that uh, this particular this particular property has had very little uh, water use, and that dates back um, all the way at least to 2016. Um, can you explain why there's so little water use at a residential property? Okay, in the summertime from April to about October, mm -hmm. I'm in and out. I run a charter up on Lake Erie. I'm a charter captain on Lake Erie, so I'm gone like four days, but I come home spend a few couple of days, do my laundry, cut my grass, make sure it's cut, and I leave again. But I run charters on Lake Erie from end of April to October. Okay. There, there's a notation in, in the uh, water department's records that indicates that in April of 2018, you were contacted by an employee of the water department um, because there had been zero water use of the property at which time the note indicates that you had stated that you do not live at the property anymore and that you only no, come to I the didn't, property. I didn't say that. I never told him that. Uh, so that's an incorrect statement in their notes? That's an incorrect statement, sir. Okay. In, uh, on November 15th of 2019, another employee of the water department had contacted you, um, again, about the water use, at which time you had indicated, at least according to their notes, uh, that you did not live there. Um, is I, that I, I never said that. No, so I, at, the, I at this time, is, is the property your primary residence? Yes, sir. Mr. Dorsey, uh, for, forgive my skepticism, but um, I, I am looking at, at your water usage here. Um, you know, I, I obviously have a, a home in the, the city of Reynoldsburg. I, I'm there more often than, than uh, you are, but it, it looks like uh, typically you only use one unit of water per quarter. Uh, I'm just struggling to see how, you know, even washing one load of laundry would account for that. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I used a lot of water because I had a hot, I got a hot tub in the back and I had to refill it three times. So you probably saw that big usage. I do see that, yes. But uh, that was the main problem I had with the water, well, as far as using a lot of water back then. Well, but I'm saying you're, you're using basically none now. I mean- No, I'm, I'm using water. I need as much, I use as much as I am supposed to, sir, that I need to use. So, Fortunately, Mr. Dorsey just lives a couple of streets down from me. Um, you know, I do notice the, because uh, you do have like a truck with a Ann Marie charter sticker on yes, the back sir. window. I see yes, that there sir. frequently. So I thought it was kind of strange. I don't pay direct attention to day in and day out activities, but I do see um, he used to be a K uh, Columbus canine, correct? Yes, sir. I'm retired. So I, I, I you know, I don't know if the days are blending together, but I have seen the vehicle there and him there on occasion. So I know he runs a charter service because I've seen his advertisement. So, you know, I'm not not skeptical um, necessarily, but, you know, if the water is the only way we're triggering these, I don't, you know, do you live alone, Mr. Dorsey? I don't want to get too private. Yes, sir. I, I live alone. I have me and my retired, my dogs with me. Yeah. So, I, I you know. I don't know what one man would 
or one person would typically use, but, um, you know, I, I, I can't say on a specific date I've seen him, but he has been there, so. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, Mr. Chairman, um, it, it's not the lack of water use that's the only trigger. And we, we went back and of course we took a look at these notes and what members of the water department have indicated based on what they say are their conversations uh, with the owner uh, and that coupled with the lack of water use. Um, you know, one of the good things about these appeal process is that it gives us an opportunity to talk with the property owner uh, here on video and get an opportunity to observe him. Um, and, you know, at this point in time, I am prepared to say uh, that although I am a little bit skeptical, like um, Mr. First, I think there is at least a fair question about whether this property is vacant. And I don't think that based upon the information that we can provide to the board, um, that the city has enough evidence of vacancy to uphold the vacant finding. So I would concede the issue on this particular appeal. So um, one thing that I'd like to establish if we could, what's the definition of either a resident or a resident or a definition of vacancy? Um, you know, I think this will set the tone for all future presentations we may have or rebuttals. Um, it may also set the tone for later on in the discussions of other cases. So I know I've read what the ordinance is, but, you know, if you could just briefly state, you know, what the definition was used and, you know, mm -hmm. elaborate on that a little bit. Sure, sure. So under uh, section uh, 1399.02 uh, subsection U uh, that provides the, the general definition for vacancy and then it goes into a little bit more detail. Uh, in the subsection most commonly used here administratively uh, to make a determination about whether a property of it is vacant is subsection uh, 1D. Um, so it, it's easier for the city to be able to identify potential uh, vacant properties based on a lack of water usage, let's say in a residential district where you would certainly not expect to see that in a home that is occupied. Uh, so that, that triggers the city's interest. And uh, earlier in the summer after this uh, ordinance went into effect, we had identified over 150 properties uh, that we wanted to take a closer look at to see if they were in fact uh, vacant. We were able to remove uh, over 50 of those properties from the list, either because they were resold or because we were able to determine that they weren't vacant. Um, to do that, we did some visual observation uh, with our code officers. And in addition, we would go back and take a look at the water notes or talk to neighbors in the area if they were home and available to present a statement. Uh, in this particular case, the reason why uh, the city went ahead and, and pursued and sent out a notice to register uh, was based both on the lack of water usage, uh, that no one had been observed at the home, uh, and uh, that the notes had indicated that the homeowner had stated that the property was in fact vacant. If those notes are inaccurate, uh, all I can say is those are the notes that uh, we rely upon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, given that the uh, the city seems to be withdrawing um, the you know the, the notice of violation in this case, so would you like a motion in any particular manner, or are, are you satisfied to, to let this uh, let this die on the vine, so to speak? I would recommend at this point a motion to to grant the appeal um, to find that the property is is based upon the evidence provided, uh, not vacant. Well, uh, that being the case, Mr. Shook, uh, I am more than happy to so move. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, can we have the roll call, please? Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Uh, Pastor Linder? Yes. Mr. Ratke? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey, for coming in and chatting and maybe revealing a little bit more about your you know, life than what you wanted to. So. OK. I'll book a charter and go fish and catch some walleye. <laughs> uh, I lost my, sorry, I keep losing my, I pulled up keep losing my agenda. Um, 
Moving on, item E2, an appeal for 6860 Tanya Terrace. Can we please have an overview of that? Good night. Good Thank night, you. Mr. Dorsey. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Dorsey. I don't know. Am I speaking or are you saying something first? Yeah, I'll just give a, a brief rundown if, you, if, I, if I could. Um, is it Ms. Finley? Yeah, Ms. Cook. Yeah. Finley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then um, I'll turn it over to you in just a minute. Sure. Oh, my record here. Okay, on this property, this is another property that we had identified um, based on a lack of water use. This is located in a suburban residential district. Um, we went back and we had code officers observe the property and take photos. Uh, there was no one home at the house. That doesn't necessarily make it a vacant, but that's, that's the field work that they're able to do. Uh, the photographs of the property demonstrate that it is well maintained. Uh, there's no indication of dilapidation either on the exterior or um, in the main grounds of the property. Uh, the notes from the water department over the years in attempting to determine what the use of the property has been indicate that um, most recently, and this was in November of 2015, a, an employee of the water department talked to Ms. Cook Finley and reported that she had indicated that the house has been vacant for over 20 years. Uh, she had indicated that she routinely checks on the home um, and may use a small amount of water, uh, but that is all. And I, I think that's probably consistent with our visual observations, which is that uh, she does in fact maintain the home, um, but perhaps does not live in the home. Um, but that, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Cook Finley to maybe give us a little bit more uh, background on this particular project. Yes. And I'm sure I never used the word vacant to the water department, but um, it is my second residence. I've owned the house since um, uh, for 45 years. And after I married my husband later in life, my other husband died in that house. I maintained the house. It's my retreat. I'm there at least every other day. Um, and people probably wouldn't think I was there because I almost always pull the car into the garage when I'm there because I just feel safer that way. And, um, but, I main, and as you say, I do maintain the house. I do all of my, um, the bush trimming. I do pay for the lawn. I do pay for the snow. I still have a landline there because my um, cell phone AT&T doesn't seem to work very well there. So I, I like that um, for the safety benefit, but it's, it's my retreat. And when I go out of town, I um, pay a young man to watch out for the house. My biggest concern now is that you have me on this list that I'm gonna be set up for vandals, um, even though I still use the house. My possessions are in that house. Um, the, I was just thinking last night when I was in my garage putting in um, washer fluid in my car where I live, um, for my main residence in Bexley. I don't have a garage to do that in a warm spot. There's a lot of things that I use that house for. Um, it's still my house. And yes, it is the second residence. And I know that sounds odd. I don't own any money, uh, any money on it. I've owned that house, like you say, since, since 1975. So um, I don't know how I'm harming anybody, but if it's all about water usage, I can bring more laundry there to do. I can run my dishwasher there. I have all the appliances. If that's what it takes um, to not be considered a vacant house, I really don't want the concern of vandals coming because they think it's a vacant house. Like I said, there's never, unless I'm out of town and have somebody watching it, I'm there every other day. Or if I'm sick, then I might not be. I, I um, even, and I, I put this in my letter, I don't know if you've seen it, I mean, you know, things bother me, like there was rust on the back fence. I had the, the rails painted silver. My husband thought I was nuts, but I, you know, I, I've really done a good job of maintaining um, that house because it's mine. It's my house. It's my retreat. My things are in it. And I spend a lot of time in Reynoldsburg. I've never quit shopping at Kroger's in Reynoldsburg. I shop on 256. And so in between things, I stop there. My periodontist is there. You know, I, I, I do spend time there. So yes, there'd be times that 
if somebody ever knocked on the door, I might not even answer because I don't do that in Betsy either. You can ask my husband that. I, I don't answer doors if I don't know somebody's coming. So I'm glad to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mrs. Finley. Uh, we appreciate that. And we appreciate you um, keeping up with the property, uh, certainly. And I think, I'm not going to speak for Mr. Shug, but I think the clear intent of uh, doing this vacant property registry and some of the other code enforcement things uh, under the new administration is really to clean up uh, potential dilapidated areas or blighted areas within the community. This is clearly not a home that's blighted. Um, and, and yes, I mean, we could certainly get technical on those terms on, uh, and you have, I, I do, I do find that Ms. Finley's, um, you know, question about the potential of vandals, uh, Mr. Shook, and, and maybe you can tell me, and I know we haven't completely, uh, have the list completely updated and we're still compiling things, but is this going to be something that is going to be to the public where somebody could look online and find out where the vacant properties are in the house? I mean, I understand the whole goal is to ensure that we're uh, getting other individuals to come in, buy up properties, live within our community, be a part of our community. Um, but that is a decent point that maybe we should discuss. Yeah, in fact, this is a, this is a discussion that I had with the mayor a while back. Uh, we are not making uh, any list available online. Um, so they you're are- public, You're public tonight on Facebook. Correct, correct. Um, Typically, these meetings in a non-pandemic era would be held in City Hall and would not be broadcast on Facebook. Um, so I, I, I understand and appreciate that, um, given the current circumstances, that this is something that is published online. Uh, as, as, as far as the list itself, uh, we do not intend to make that available online. Uh, it is a public record. Um, certainly, someone could request it if they so chose. Um, these are, and, and, and to, to Andrew's point about maintenance of the property. The, the purpose of the vacant property uh, registration ordinance from a policy perspective uh, wasn't just to wasn't just to register properties that are not taken care of. Um, it was to ensure that those properties that are vacant are taken care of. And this is one that's taken care of. Um, whether it's vacant or not, that's I think up to the board to make that determination. Um, but when when we have these properties registered with the city, uh, they are required to provide to us a contact person in case we notice issues with the property um, and prepare a security plan. Uh, let the city know how the property is being maintained and secured. So it's not just about the properties that are dilapidated, it's about any property that is vacant. Yeah, I'll follow up on that. I think that was kind of the intent of the rental registration as well, you know, that the, the state passed was, you know, having some sort of immediate contact on these properties for incidental things on absentee owners, you know, we would have the same thing, you know, when we go in and do a right away project, we can contact the owner, which may go to a mortgage company, um, you know, somewhere in Texas, and that word would never get to them that there's a public engagement or some sort of meeting that they may be interested in. So I, I could see the need on a on a vacant property, but I, I do caution heavily as to you know her argument about intrusion of privacy and you know some of the questioning. I, I would caution members not to push too hard to violate any any sort of confidences because there's a lot of issues out there, and that kind of goes to why I wanted a definition of vacant, you know, of course, Miss, uh, forgive me, I don't, I don't recall your name right off top. That's yeah. all right. That's Ms. all right. Friendly doesn't have, you know, maybe what some would consider a true definition of occupancy, but, you know, to me, it, it's not vacant. She's there, she's using it. So I, I struggle with this. You know, because we had another similar situation presented last month where if you read through it, it was kind of kind of the same ordeal. Is that vacant or, you know, if she stops by once a week, is it not vacant? If she stops by twice a week, you know, where's the fine line on the definition of a vacancy? Are we just considering you're hanging your head there? Then you've got the six month people, um, you know, that go on vacation. How's that apply? So there's, there's a lot of issues with this that I'm having trouble with. So. 
I'll I'll quit my rant. But um, anybody else have any concerns, comments, discussion on this? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I I think given uh, Miss Cook Finley's. Uh, testimony here this evening, I, I am satisfied that the building is not unoccupied. Um, as I read through uh, the section uh, 1399 here in the code, um, it is relatively clear the, the meaning of, of vacancy and unoccupied. Um, I, I certainly don't think it was the intent of the law and, and I have no interest here this evening um, trying to, to define very stringently how someone should use their property. Um, it, it, in fact, when I, I look here on uh, Google Maps of the, the property, uh, the street view image there, there's a gentleman in the driveway. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, kind of given the totality of the circumstances here and everything, uh, because water usage alone is, is not sufficient in order to uh, define a property as vacant, I, I am satisfied that this property is, is not vacant. Any other discussion, concerns, or comments? This is Pastor Linder. Not to just overstate, I agree completely with what's been shared. I think the presentation by uh, Ms. Cook Finley has been fantastic to understand her use and her presence there. I do think we have to think about the safety of this information being shared. And I know you're in process of doing that, and I appreciate uh, Attorney Shook and the mayor and others that try to put these things in process, but they also will tweak them as we move along so that it is the most positive uh, setup. Uh, but I'm in agreement with what's been said. This is not a vacant property. Any other questions, concerns, comments? Anybody wish to entertain a motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I, I, I move that we grant this appeal for the, the property at 6860 Tanya Terrace. Pastor Linder, I second. Moved and seconded, any further discussion? Hearing none, can we please have the roll call for the vote? Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Pastor Linder? Yes. Mr. Redke? Yes. Again, Ms. Mrs. Cook Finley, I apologize for this. You know, I, it, it's starting to bother me with the last two, how much detail we've had to delve into your life and the, the issues you brought up with the um, you know, this going out on Facebook, I know it is a public meeting, but there is a lot of personal information you had to divulge. So I, you know, I'm, I'm very cautious of this and it's starting to really concern me. So again, you know, from me, there's an apology that we had to go down this road. Thank you so. very much. Thank you all very much for listening. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Moving on, I think we're at item E3 for an appeal for 7551 to 7559 East Main Street. Applicant is Donald Isles. Excuse me if I mispronounced your name. Can we please have a presentation on this one? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. This is a... Um, so this is in a commercial district on East Main Street. Um, these are two buildings that are side by side. Uh, we have these as the same agenda item. Or we have these as separate agenda items. Same agenda. Same. same. Uh, these are two commercial buildings that are side by side. Um, this is something again that was noticed through a lack of water usage. We have had communication here uh, with the applicant. Um, my understanding is that he used to operate a business out of. Uh, the building that is on the um, west side in that uh, he, is, he still uses that as an office and then at the building on the east side that that is used as storage. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't want to go into any further detail on it. I think that um, 
I will say personally, I think that having had an opportunity now to observe how we are doing this process with vacant properties um, and the appeal process and with this being uh, Facebook meetings in the middle of COVID, I think that I can say we need to do a better job administratively of deciding whether a property is vacant and ensure that um, properties that could go either way that are questionable uh, should be found to be not vacant on an administrative standpoint rather than coming before the board. And on that basis and that basis alone and based on my conversations with the property owner, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask the board to grant this appeal without going into any further detail. Mr. First, I said no. Ms. Barnhart, second. Moved and seconded. Uh, well, well said, Mr. Shuck. I, I appreciate it. I wish we would have been able to get to that a little sooner before the last one. So, you know, it, yeah, it, I, it is difficult. I understand their intent, but, um, you know, if there's any further discussion, hearing none, can we please have the vote? Uh, Ms. Barnard? Yes. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Mr. First? Yes. Pastor Linder? Yes. Mr. Retke? Yes. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Isles. And uh, you got off easy compared to the other ones, I guess. So, um, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> we appreciate you. You know, I don't know how these are determined, but sitting through all the other uh, agenda items, this one was actually a, a little bit lengthy today. So, you know, sitting there patiently like you did, we really appreciate it. So best of luck to you and, um, you know, congrats, I guess. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Audrey. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Thank each and every one of you. It was very informative. <laughs> Do I get a letter? Okay, moving on item F, other business. Is there any other business come before the board? Tim, we will send something out as uh, the, the board finalized that uh, per there. Uh, so uh, Ms. Wheeler will send something off to you, letting okay. you know what the recommendation was. Okay, thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. Item F, other business. Any other business come before the board tonight? Hearing none, I guess we'll move on to item G, adjournment. So we'll adjourn the meeting at 7.27 p.m. tonight. Thank you, board members, for uh, a little lengthy. We haven't had this kind of meeting in a long time, so.